Oh, oh. It's for the record, son. Yeah. Yeah. It's for the. It's for the record. I said it's for the. It's for the record. Yeah, boy. It's for the. It's for the record. Damn. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Nugs B. Thank you for tuning in to Together FTR. It's been quite some time, and I am truly thankful for all the people that were still showing love on the page. And uh, we're on the comeback episode, baby, so what can you do? I'm here with my boy Lambo. You already know we're in the building. Uh, we got some cool stuff to talk about today. Really excited. C can't explain how pumped I am to do this again. I've uh, been recording a lot of music as well, so it's about to be a lot of fun. A lot of new stuff coming. So stay tuned for that, but let's go ahead and get into this. Kicking it old school as we used to with inter it. entertainment history, my friend. So first we got, let's see here. On this day in 1970, Elton John releases Your Song, which becomes his very first hit. That's a jam. Dude, Bay Elton right John. It's fire. I love it. 100%. That... That's definitely top five songs uh, by him for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Your sure. song. I mean, it's just, I can't, I didn't know it was uh, his first actual hit that uh, made a lot of noise. I was not aware of that because everybody knows him for Tiny Dancer, of course. Yeah. Um, but that was much further in his career, though. Yeah. You know, he had already been touring the world, I mean, so on and so forth. So, you know, everybody knows him for that, but I, I guess your song is the first uh, hit, but the I mean, first I, hit, baby. really one of the the biggest hits. I mean, in my opinion, truly, he, he has a lot of hits, but that's the one that just sticks out. I'd say probably that in Rocket Man and Tiny Dancer probably have the most, um, you know, fandom behind them. I feel like they've right. been used in more soundtracks. I feel like they've been used on uh, well, TV shows, movies. Ads, commercials, back when commercials were a, a thing that people actually <laughs> paid attention to. Yeah. Because, like, now... Skip ad. Oh. <laughs> skip ad, bro. Dude, I pay for YouTube premium okay. just so I don't have yeah. to experience any ads at all. Like, I don't, I, don't wanna, I don't want none of that nonsense in my life. Agree. I, I, look, I want instant gratification. I'm a loser who needs it. That's why I won't watch certain shows until they come out. They got to be all the way out. Like, yeah. it has to be done. Yeah. Like, season has to be completed. I have a problem with just watching one episode. Yeah. And I remember, like, when DVR came out, man, it was like, I could fast forward to the commercials. Yeah. And that's even, DVR like, a thing DVR was of the past. next level, dude. Yeah. And now that's, like, a thing of the past. Like, fast Truly. forward through what commercials? Remember, what was the other one? TiVo? Yeah. Was that another yeah. one? Yeah. TiVo, uh... That was crazy, though. Like, I remember I wasn't even cool enough to have DVR. Like, I was jealous of other people who had it. Like, oh, you can record Everybody Loves Raymond and watch it next week. <laughs> you can record a cartoon. Like, you can record a game, like a movie that only played this time on this channel specifically, and now you can watch it whenever you want. I like, mean, totally off topic, but I mean, think about how, like, how does that change Saturday morning cartoons? Dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I was a kid, it was like that was an event because you only got – from we got the bus at three thirty or whatever, four o'clock, and you get like an yeah. hour to watch the cartoons. Yeah. So <clears throat> see, now you can watch cartoons. Like my kids watch cartoons all day long if you, they want to. I, as a grown man, yeah. watch cartoons all day long. What are we talking about yeah, I'm, here, I'm guy? To act like it's my kids. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a grown man child. What are we talking about, right? guy? Um, my Little Pony, yeah. You, <laughs> Jackie Chan Adventures, I don't know if you remember yes. that. You do? Okay. I don't know why that just hit in my head whenever you said My Little Pony. But, like, I would genuinely watch uh, Jackie Chan Adventures every day after school. And then once I found out you could stream it, like when streaming got big, I binge watched the entire – I think there's only, like, two or three seasons. Okay. Knocked that out. And it was just as good as a grown man as it was when I was a child. Yeah. And it was just not nostalgia. It wasn't like, you know, I remember. I remember Jackie Chan Adventures. It wasn't like that, bro. It wasn't hitting me in, like, a, oh, well, this is just a nostalgia. Like, show was good. Yeah. Another one I'll tell you, and this is true. I will, I will die on this hill truly. Ben 10, bro. Have you ever watched Ben 10? Yes. Dude, I remember watching it as a child, and I was like, man, this is pretty cool. Whatever. Truly didn't appreciate it until Raph watched it. 
Yep. And when he watched it again, he got into it deep. Like yep. for years, he loved Ben Ten. Like, and he still he still watches it every once in a while. But there for a long time, dude, he was constantly watching it. And I was like, you know what? Let me see what this is about because I loved it uh, when I was a kid. So watching it with him, I was like, oh my dear heavens, That's this good. is tremendous. Also, not to not not only was it a great show with good writing and good action. But, dude, my development of love for aliens has, like, oh, yeah. truly went off the off the charts. Like, yeah. I'm a weirdo crazy guy. Like, I love aliens, man. Honestly, the, the artwork on the aliens was always cool, too. Like, super, super cool. you saw a new cool. alien, you were like, oh, that thing 100%. was awesome. 100%. And then it went on, like, after my time, bro. Like, I think, I don't even know when. I want to say in, like, Probably when you were watching it, it only had, like, a few aliens. It was only the 10. Went. It was only yeah, 10, bro. Yeah. And then, like, maybe five more after that. Yeah. Dude, there's a specific Ben 10 where he has all of the aliens yeah. on the Omnitrix yeah. as a grown man. Yeah. And he's just, like, a murderer. Like, you can't you can't rock with him, bro. Like, you can't see him, like, 100%. But Ben 10, anybody who hasn't watched Ben 10, dude, seriously out. give that a watch because it's truly, like... Really, really good, even for a cartoon. Like, Cartoon Network smashed it. They we, really we could did. do this whole thing about cartoons. I mean, Believe that. Don't, you already know. Don't get don't get don't us started. Get our started on, don't get us started on, like, Nick cartoon, Tunes. Bro. I think we had a conversation a while back for hours we did. about Nicktoons. We truly did. Just hanging out, like, genuinely talking about cartoons as grown men yeah. who have children. Yeah. <laughs> like, we have families, and we're talking. Like, bro, listen. <laughs> I, when I was 15, like, I, I went and saw. I, this, is, this tells you how much I love cartoons. I went and saw Lion King in the movie theater. Yeah. By myself. Like, I legit called my uncle and was like, hey, can I borrow your kid so I don't look like an idiot? <laughs> and I took his kid that, with me. I'd never even really met the kid. I just took him to took him to movies because I was like, I don't want to look like an idiot being 15 watching Lion King. But that thing was fire. I still <laughs> want favorite movies. That is one thing that I love. That's like one of the biggest perks of being a dad with small children. Yeah. You know, like, you can be like, you know what? I kind of want to go see something that is not going to be appropriate yeah. if a grown man walks yeah. in there. It's going to look weird. Yeah. Like, it was Super Pets. You know, like, that came out, and it's like, you know, I was talking to somebody, and he was like, yeah, man, like, I wanted to go see it, but, like, I, my kids are all older now. I think it was Chris. I think I was talking to my cousin, like, and he said, he was like, yeah, I wanted to go see it, man, but like, the kids are all grown now, so I didn't want to be just that. Just call me up, man. We'll go watch yeah, Super like, Pets together. Yeah, like, I told him, I was like, why didn't you call me, bro? Yeah. Like, we can ride just, str we okay. can pull up grown men to Super Pets, yeah. bro. Like, I don't even care. I'll dress up and everything. Like, I'm an animal. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Ben 10, 100%. So good. Got to add that, that again. again, man. I had to say that again because it was seriously such a great cartoon. So back to the entertainment history. As we do, we get on tangents. We act silly. We have some laughs. You know, what can you do? So on this day in 2019, the beat-up sweater Kurt Cobain wore on Nirvana's MTV Unplugged special sells at an auction for $334,000. That's... That unplugged Crazy. though. I gotta say that unplugged is one of the best. I truly don't even like Nirvana, and I love that unplugged. Oh, you don't like Nirvana? I, I gotta go. No. Yeah, he's out. He's I'm leaving. Out of here. No man, I I was always. Now I will say a lot of their other stuff. Like I'm not really all that into, but yeah. that album in the Pines. Yeah, bro. Okay. <laughs> that is their covers on there. One of the best songs, honestly. Yes, that is one of the best songs. And Kurt Cobain was a good songwriter, and he even talked about how, like, uh, he talked about how he purposely wrote his songs to be, uh, you know, simplistic, so they were right. easy to sing along with. Like, right. he, there was an interview that Dave Grohl was talking about it. Like, Dave Grohl was talking about how. Um, you know, him and Kurt talked about it, and that was like their that was their goal. Yeah, you know, like that's what they were doing. Um, and then it says, uh, after Cobain died, Courtney Love gave it to the family's nanny, who sold it to pay for cancer treatments. That's crazy! Wow, wow. that is insane. Yeah. I mean, it, at least it helps somebody out. Like that's yeah. really awesome. But I mean, it's crazy that she just like here, you can just have this. It's the least she could do after she. Well, this is have. true, my friend. This is true, my friend. Uh, also, we got on this day in 2018, 50 Cent uses Groupon to buy 200 tickets to an upcoming Jaw Rule concert for $15 each, just so the seats will be empty. The rappers have been feuding since the 90s. That is the best troll, man. That is the <laughs> in best. In 2018. 
Yes. I love it. That's literally the. It. That's like the most boss move you could ever make on somebody. Petty. Like, yeah, that's Petty Crocker for real out that's here, like, son. Like, that's, that's award-winning Petty. Like that's, that's, that's next level, bro. Next Tom, level. That's Tom Petty. Absolutely. That's crazy, that's, man. Sh- I can't. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want so, to see, so, see his reaction. So 200 tickets, bro. Like, let's say that's the first, like, four or five rows. Yeah. Like, depending on the venue, but, like, I mean, that could be. Potentially be five or six rows of yeah. people. If it's an arena, I mean, I mean, arena is not really going to be. An it effect, wouldn't. It wouldn't. But like, he's not doing arenas. I mean, it's Ja Rule. Ja Rule's not doing arenas. No, so let's no. be clear. And what yeah. year is this? 2018. Eight. So yeah. Ja Rule was definitely not doing arenas. Knew. He might have been doing them. 2008. Maybe 2001. 2000. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. Yeah. When they maybe I don't even know. Let me uh, let me double check and see because Ja Rule was raining for a minute. He was. Uh, let's see when not Mesmerize yeah. came out. I uh, that's one of my that's one of my favorite joints by him, bro. Like that is a killer song. Like that really is. Let's see here, two thousand two. So he was okay. raining in two thousand two. He, he might have been two hundred. Might have been negligible when yeah. he was in two thousand two, thousand three, five. Two thousand eighteen. Nobody no, besides washed up white chicks that are <laughs> like yeah. about to hit forty yeah. love. Ja Rule. Oh yeah, I am one of them. You know what I mean? Like I'm a washed up white chick that loves Ja Rule. But like, there's not a huge. There's not, like I would never, I would never pay to go see him. No. Like I would never like pay money to go like see him live. Yeah, he just never really did it for me, bro. Honestly, like not to that level at least. Right, right. I mean, he. Uh, d- make no mistake. I'll bump Ja Rule, and Ashanti. You know, I'll bump the, I'll bump the songs. But at the same time. He's not like the RZA or like Fat Joe no. or something like that. Like somebody who like from New York or like Fifty Cent even, bro. Like I would rather see Fifty. Like I mean, for I've never really sure. been big on Fifty, but definitely bigger really? than, than nah, I mean, really, he's good, but he, I mean, he's not one of my faves, you know. Dude, genuinely, <clears throat> Fifty Cent, Get Richard, I try and truly like molded, um, I molded I, how I view rap. I got kind of sick of it because all his stuff was just like club rap. There, you know what I mean? I feel like mm. not, not all. Okay, let me say this. I got you. He had some good stuff. I got you. But I felt like they hit it so deep in the albums and stuff that it was all all you ever heard was like the radio hits, the video hits, the, the what you hear in the club. It's like okay, you know, I'm with to you. me to me, I wasn't really feeling those songs. Like I'm with I you. like something. I mean, you know, I love my rap, but I like <sighs> something that it not just hits you in the ears. It's yeah. got to hit you. In deep, you know, it's got to hit you real deep. It's got to be talking about something that really means something. Like, that's the stuff that really gets me. I, that's just why I always like, yeah. you know, Wu-Tang and, and NWA and Nas, you know, stuff that has substance. You know, it, it's some substance to it. And I just yeah. feel like his stuff was very 80s rock, if you know what I mean. How like, 80s rock didn't really say anything. <sighs> it was just good noise. You know what I'm saying? That's a great comparison. That's a great comparison. It's it's a, a music of excess. You know, yeah. we're, we're partying, we're having some fun. Like yeah. earlier, we were talking about about the the uh, uh, shoot. What's that? Uh, what's that song we were talking about earlier? Um, oh, uh, Kanye. Um, oh, I, I thought uh, we were talking about the Aerosmith song. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, talking about, we're, talking we're talking about. about we're talking about. We're uh, talking about blood on the leaves. Blood on the leaves. Yeah. You know, and it's like that, it could have gone so deep, and I, the fact that you're hitting it with, you know. Uh, a, a party tune to me yeah. that, that ain't what music is to me i like party i mean i like music to make me feel things so it's more than that but 50, 50 i mean i 50 to me doing what he did to ja Rule, yeah big respect for that right there <laughs> bro big respect because i'm all, I'm level, all about bro. some some next level petty that's, you know what i mean that's goat level petty i mean that's he, he could have dropped a diss track yeah but nah, he went way better he than already, this track. He already dropped all the he dropped best, all kinds of good the diss best tracks, diss but tracks, bro. That's like, way better. Love it. Yes, one hundred percent agreed. Um. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> oh god, it's so funny, man. Like, <clears throat> I just back to the whole fifty thing is like the reason I really liked him, and I get what you're saying too. Like, there was a lot of club tracks. There right. was a lot of like. You know, songs that were just fun to listen to. Right, Just right. good fun. Like, a lot of fun, you know? And, uh, but here's the thing, man. Like, listening to the soundtrack for Get Richard Die Trying, yeah. that soundtrack was just as good as Get Richard Die Trying, the album. Okay. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. 
in my opinion. But I don't know how many of those songs. Like, I need to link you to some of those songs yeah. because if you listen to those songs, like, they are very substance filled. You know, they are truly. I feel great like by that time, I'd already kind of like turned him off in a way. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd already had enough of in the club. Yeah, dude, it, you know what's so, so funny about you that? what I need. You know, <laughs> like, I, I had already been done with that. I was. It's your birthday. Like, I was, <laughs> I was, I was all okay. right with that. Hear me out. So, in the club, I get the hook has been just played yes. and played and played. But if you listen to those verses, yeah. I, dude, let me just pull it up, actually. Let me just all read right, right. one part of a verse. Excuse me. I think it's on verse one, actually. Teach getting educated, right? Uh, you know what I mean. Look, yeah, I gotta bring. I, I gotta it. bring the noise, That's what I bro. Like. He said, uh, "Show me love, load up." He said, "He said in the hood in L.A. They say in fifty, you hot. They like me. I want them to love me like they love Pac." Okay, dude. That's a hard bar, like. They were showing him mad love because of Dre, but, like, he wasn't getting Tupac love. Right, So right. he was aspiring to do that. And, like, let me see. I can't really say the rest because, you know, <laughs> it's it's explicit. <laughs> but you need to re- listen to All that right. first verse on In the Club, and that's just one of the parts that always stuck. And, like, it didn't stick with me until I was a grown man and I was listening to it because I'd only heard the hook in my head. I associated that song with the hook only. Like, there was no... I didn't care about yeah, the verses. That's kind of my problem, yeah. I feel you that. know what I mean? Like, I had associated it strictly with the hook. But, dude, whenever I listened to it again as a grown man, like, <clears throat> listening to it, I was in the car or something. I don't even know where I was listening to it. And uh, it really just resonated with me differently. Okay. It really I might did. Have to give another shot. You have to give another shot, bro. See if there's some hidden meaning in, uh, For sure. in the candy shop, you know? <laughs> there's definitely not great verses yeah. on that one, but... In the club, man. Those verses were right. tight. They really were. Um, so that's all the entertainment history. Once again, I just want to thank everybody for showing mad love on the page still, even though there were no new episodes, and that's 100% on me. <clears throat> uh, I'm not going to go into details, but, like, real life kind of just happened. Got busy. Life you know, happens. You know, life happens, man. Yep. Like, it is what it is, but we're back now. The music's back on track. Like, everything is really just hitting, bro. Like, things are about to come back together in Pop a way off. oh in a way that i'm right, just so right. excited i feel like i'm in a great mental space right now my head is on right um i truly feel that i'm just ready to ready to make th- some things happen man like I- i'm really excited and-, and i feel like i'm looking at them in a very very different light this time right right i'm looking at them in a very fun and very like you know Let's we're both in this. a good spot. We, we, we're loving living. You know what I'm exactly. saying? It's time, you know, to, it's time to share that a little bit. It is, man. And, like, there's so much good that came from this podcast before, like, you know, promoting local businesses yep. and, like, you know, expanding people's knowledge on things and, like, looking things up, having some laughs, you know, being silly. Like, it's a lot of fun, man. I want to introduce some new segments and stuff. and Entertaining an old man's dream to, <laughs> you know, have a little fun and talk on camera. You know, like I uh, – and, and, and the thing is, like we were talking it's about – It's my Make-A-Wish Foundation you know? wish right here this before I die of old age and being overweight. <laughs> but, you know, like I was saying is like – like earlier we were talking and we were talking about how – like doing bloopers and stuff. So, yeah. like – when we mess up or something because like it's it, we're gonna do live episodes too but like in the beginning there's always so much like snickering and like just silly talk like oh, we're yeah. always just like being silly and i want i'm going to i'm going to keep those and i'm gonna make like a compilation video of all the like the best bloopers that we can go through like i'm gonna pick through all of them and do that so i'm, I'm psyched about that they're mostly me awesome. trying to figure out how close to get the microphone without <laughs> eating it literally dude like and like, especially when other people are here, because like we're just riding dolo tonight. We out here just yep, me and my yep. guy, you know. But like sometimes we'll have like a couple few people here, and like they'll say something funny, yeah. or like there'll be other guests that are on that might say, you know. So it's at it's some gonna... point I get really close. And, what are you wearing? <laughs> Literally, man. Uh, so I got some, I got some pretty, uh, I got some pretty cool topics today. One thing I wanted to talk about is. I feel like names are kind of silly. Like, I've always hated my name. Like, I never liked my name. And that's why I was so excited when my brother gave me the nickname Nugs, you know? Yeah. Like, I was super pumped about that. Um, 
And whenever he gave me that, I was just like, sweet. Now nobody has to call me Taylor again. Like, I hate it. I've always hated that name. Really? So one thing. I feel like oh, a lot yeah. of people at some point in their life hate their name at some point. I have truly always hated my name. Like, really? for real. Like, since I was a little kid, man. And, uh. You know, uh, but what I was saying is, like, you know, once I got a nickname, I was like, yes, this is awesome. Like, I don't have to be called Taylor anymore. And, like, the only thing is, is, like, even to this day, like, people will call me Tay. And, like, the only people who can really do that is, like, family and women. Like, yeah. I'll allow women to do it. You know, or, like, you know, like, uh, you know, family members right. and things like that. Like, I'll definitely let them do it. But I don't I just I always hated it. I'd just rather be called Nugs, man. Like, I really would. Like, I would just rather be called Nugs. Um, but anyway, so the topic is, should we be given names by our parents, or should you have to earn your name? I mean, I think if you look historically, a lot of cultures have, have had a, a, a child name, and then by the time they reach adulthood, I mean, older cultures. Um, and they I'm get, listening, but my dog's uh, going crazy, so I'm going <laughs> But they, they eventually, you know, earn a nickname with their – uh, with the rite of passage, yes, thank you. It's <laughs> my boy right here. He come to see me. He can't help Lay it. Down. <laughs> Lay down, sir. Love All it. right. He was not going to stop until I let him in. Exactly. Yeah, he was but, never gonna stop. No, he genuinely. was gonna keep on going. He was gonna keep he going, to be on and here, that's all so. you would have heard in the audio. So, you yeah, know, we're not doing that. We're we'll right just right come in that. here and kick it. But yeah, I totally. I mean, I agree. I think it's a nice idea. I think it's you know, but like I was saying, you know, historically, there's a lot of <laughs> they have kind of rite of passage, right? <laughs> pick up some some name that means something to I think them. That is so awesome. Like yeah. I think that is one of the coolest things about certain like you know Native American tribes, yep. and I feel like a lot of uh, like indigenous people like who tr who still live in villages and right. like and sleep in huts and things of that nature like i think that's so cool look at this guy look at this guy <laughs> he's just out here <clears throat> but i, I uh, right <laughs> but i uh i've always thought that was so interesting man and like what do you think do you think that we should just be given a name before we're even like before we're even looked at like you haven't even seen this human being, right, right. And, and you're giving them a name that they might hate. I mean, it's, it's, it'd be hard to change, but I do, I do agree that the fact that, like, names, everybody always looks up baby books, and, like, names have meanings. It means yeah. this, it means that, but, like, how do you know that meaning fits that unborn child, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I mean. You could come out. You know, named Henry and and, and look like a George. You yeah. know, like yeah. you know, like it's it's you know, you could be named Dave and come out looking like a John. Yeah. You know, like you it, it, you just never know until you see that baby and like I feel like it's come just... out being named Sue and look like Johnny Cash. You know, <laughs> you never know. Not a boy named Sue. <laughs> not a boy. How do you do? Not a <laughs> not a boy named Sue. Had to be tough. There was no choice. You know. All right, it looks like I'm doing this with one arm because <laughs> he's not letting me go here. <laughs> but um, all right, guys, this is our this is our guest tonight. This believe is, that uh, this is our guest right here. We keep we, we keeping it real with Capone. You already know. Um, but what I was gonna say is, uh, so if you're uh, you know if you're still tuned in, definitely comment what you think. Um, should you be given a name or should you earn a name? And that and like. You said that it's been a thing for a long time. I feel like it would be – society has been adapted so much into that type of, you know, the norm of just getting a name, you know, rocking with that. So it might flip things upside down and maybe people would have even, even worse names than they do now. Absolutely. You know, like – you know, you could be poopy pants for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? Like, you, you could, like, earn, like, a bad name. You know, like, you, you know, we have to think of that perspective yeah, as well. Yeah. Like, it could just be a garbage name, and now you're stuck with that. Now yeah. you are poopy pants one, two, three. The Kingslayer. You know, like, yeah. you know, you like, you. I feel like it could go real bad for yeah, you. Yeah, you could. Gotta, but, it could. But then again, it would be a higher expectation on people. Like, your, your standards, like, everybody would be. I mean, you better come out as a kid. Working hard to make Working sure you earn a good hard. name. You don't want to be, you know, you slacker. Better, yeah, you better be a warrior, yeah. bro. Like, you better work hard. You better do everything you can to earn a super dope name. Yeah. You know, like, I feel like that was really cool, though, and it, it's it's kind of been on my mind for a long time. Yeah. And uh, I, mean, I, I feel like 
if you look at like old epithets and stuff, like kings and people mm-hmm. had like, or even like last names, you used to earn your last name. You know yeah. what I mean? Like based on what you did or those. It was like a things. house. It was like yeah. you know, like like you yeah. know, house yeah. Stark, bro. Like you know, house Lannister. Like yeah. you know, they earned that keep. Yeah. You know, the yeah. Targaryens. Like I feel, I feel like that's a you know. I don't think that, we can have a conversation that doesn't somehow end up. To go into Game of Thrones. You I don't know think it has it, it to, bro. It has to. I mean, I got the words of Winterfell tatted on me, son. Come on. What are we doing? Uh, but, yeah, like, even in that sense, it's like those families. And, like, I'm not saying that they should get weird and, like, right. go royal family on us, you know? Yeah, like yeah. Targaryen blood. Like, I don't think that's the move. But I truly do think earning a name would put our society in a higher like it, we would be capable of living on a higher plane. Right. Like right. you would have to earn it. You couldn't just be a loser. You couldn't just be a slacker. You couldn't, you know, there wouldn't be, you wouldn't want to, it would be great shame, bro. Come on. Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Yeah. You just kick it right you don't here. camera there. With the danger tail out here, bro. This guy, come on, man. We working out here. Come on, man. <laughs> and then I got another one. Uh, let's see here. I, uh, let's see. Oh, so the next one kind of goes into what we were saying in, in, uh, in a sense, because if this hap like it, this happens every single day all around the world, but can a single mother teach a boy how to be a man? So this goes back into it in the sense of like, think about how hard it would be for those people. But then again, it might completely eliminate that because people wouldn't want to be known as a deadbeat. That might right, be that might right. be their name. Yeah. You're just DB, baby. I mean, I, I have to beat, say my, my me? opinion on, on that topic, yeah. though. I mean, oh. like, while I, I, yeah, I wasn't exactly, uh, uh, you know, raised by a completely the whole my whole life single sure. mother, but, like, oh. I had a single mom from the time that I was 13 to, to 25, I think, oh. you know. And, yeah. uh... Yeah. I think I think any woman can you know any woman can do it. it. It's difficult. Yeah. But but you know it takes a special kind of woman, and I was lucky that I had a special type of woman for for a mother. Absolutely. You know, uh, resilient and and hardworking and yeah. and and taught good things. But I mean, am I great at doing things like working on cars? No, nah, man. But I figured it out. Thanks YouTube. Thank you but, YouTube. Yeah, for real. But, I'm learn how to make a pipe bomb and then learn how to, yeah. uh, you know, how to fix a car, and then yeah. I'm gonna fix the doorknobs after this. Yeah. You know? Exactly. You, know, you can literally learn anything. I mean. Bro. The thing that I learned from her was if you don't know how to do something because you don't have that influence, find a way. Yeah. Either find yourself a role model or mm-hmm. find yourself, you know, if I can't learn it from her, then then she was always good at being like, you got, you know, suck it up and find some way to do it. I yeah. think that, that where we get off sometimes is whether it's having a single mom or come from a broken home or just being poor or whatever it is, we look at it too much like a crutch. It's, uh, you know, it's like, oh, I can't do this and I can't do that because I was raised by a single mom or because yeah. I grew up poor or because of this disability or this, you know, not having this. I mean, yeah, so you, you basically when you, you go through adversity, it can either tear you down or build you up. Yep. You know, I use with, with my students, I use the phrase quite often. I, I use the fr- use the phrase about, uh, you know, basically I tell them be a bouncy ball. Yeah, you know you can get slammed down. Life's gonna slam you down hard. You can be an egg, or you can be a bouncy ball. <laughs> that's, you know, yeah, you can fly higher. That's, a, that's great. I, I say it all the time, or, or I tell them that you know, look at katanas. Yeah, katanas the best, sharpest blades you know throughout history. Yeah, they're forged in steel and pressure and getting beat by a hammer. Yeah. I, I want to be a katana. You know, yeah. I've been through fire. I've been through hammers. <laughs> But it makes me stronger. It didn't crush me. Didn't break me. Didn't burn me. Hey, it make me strong. You that's know. Killer, and and it, that that For comes real. from being kind of having a single mother who refused to let the things that she went through break her down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Being resilient, so, man, is one of the best. Uh, you know, best characteristics. Perseverance. Have, you know, man. perseverance. Being able to persevere and and move through all the stuff that life throws at you. Yeah. Makes you a better person. If if you've always had that charmed life where you know. Ain't not, it's ain't, just and easy been street, hard. you know, it's squishy. You're so good. It doesn't even matter if, if people just hand it to you. If you just are amazing at everything, in the long run, you're going to be weaker because of the fact that you haven't been tried and tested. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Very Does true. that make sense? Very true. Golly, <laughs> dude. What are you doing out here? 
He said, I won't be on the podcast. Bunked his noggin, boy. Bunked his noggin. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I... Back to the topic, honestly, I don't know if a woman can raise a, a boy to be a man. Okay. I feel like they need some sort of some sort of male figure, like even if it's not somebody who's around them. Like it could be somebody who's made up. It could be a fan. It could be a fictional right. character. Like it doesn't have to necessarily. I mean, I definitely had some male role models and stuff. Yeah. But I mean, you know, Dad was around long enough to teach me how to like peace standing up, kind of yeah. stuff. You know, the important stuff. But, I mean, I definitely had some male role models who I looked at yeah. uh, when I became a dad. You know, that definitely was different, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I, had a, I had a father. He just wasn't in the home, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So, I mean, I did have a, a, a male figure in my life. But, you know, I, I guess some have nothing, you know. So, I mean, I, I get that. It can definitely be difficult. You know, it can definitely be difficult. But it's not an easy task. I, I have mad respect for... Any single mother out there trying their best to do it and you know, keep your head up and, uh, and you sure. know like you said, finding some way some other role model. <laughs> I mean, there's there's groups of there's organizations you know Big Brother Big Sister kind yeah. of stuff you know those weren't around though no, until no. like what late nineties. I mean I, I have to say I mean my profession I mean most of y'all watching know that I'm a teacher I teach high school mm-hmm. I mean I I know that I have many students who don't have that, you know, don't have that same, you know, don't have a, a good, strong male role model in their life. And, and you know, I may not, I, I try to be, uh, but it may not always be, but try to be the best role model and just a good figure of this is what a man should be, you, you know? know what, you know, it's so crazy, man. Like, you just made me think of something, too. I was talking to somebody the other day. You know what's so weird about parenting and trying to do it in the best that you can? I feel like sometimes with children – I feel like sometimes you have to be their big brother or big sister. Like for a mom, it would be big sister for a man. You know, right, obviously. right. But like, I feel like sometimes a kid doesn't need to be necessarily lectured or disciplined or in certain regards. Now, certain things, obviously. I mean, I've disciplined my children. Like, right. You know, everybody should. I feel like you shouldn't just. It sh- there shouldn't just be do whatever you want. Right. Like, but it shouldn't be anarchy. But at the same time, I feel like sometimes you should talk to your kids like you are their big brother. Or in the sense of like, if they're going, through, especially when they get older, like when they get older, they need somebody that they can trust that will make them feel good about something maybe that they felt awkward about, right. or they felt maybe discouraged by something, or you know, fill in the blank. But I do truly feel that sometimes a kid needs a big brother, you know, and it needs to come from somebody who's also their parent and like. Their knowledge is completely different than what an actual big brother or big sister would be. I, I think that I, what what I take from what you're saying is kind of that what I try and do with my own children is you know sometimes my kids got to screw up a little bit, and I can't always be there being dad like bailing them out, yeah. and, or I can't be there like like guiding them at all times. I mean I'm I'm there, of course. but I think that it's important for me to back off a little bit and let them make mistakes, learn from it, and support them in it. Yeah, you know. And help them learn the lesson because of what they screwed up. I mean, Lord, in my life, my screw-ups have been some of the best lessons I've ever had. 100%. You know, and uh, it made me who I am. So I think it's important that I absolutely agree that sometimes you can't always helicopter parent. You can't always just I am bad about that sometimes. Just, you know, I don't mean it like in this way, but like, for instance, you know, you you can't put your kid in in a physical bubble. And keep them from getting a scraped knee because when they get that scraped knee, that, that healing that comes from it, that learning that comes from it, it's, it's priceless. It's you so can't get that by wearing knee pads at all times. But I don't mean this whole thing in, in that way, but like in more of a mental thing, that the the mistakes you make, the the pain that you that you get put through in life. Sometimes you got to take that pain yeah. and then sit down with them. And, and it, I think it is still as a parent, but you got to sit down with them and say, you know, okay, what can we learn from this? How can we be better? You know, how do we learn? How do we, how do we be better next time? Or, mm-hmm. And how can you apply that to other possibilities? Because Lord knows we're going to make the same mistake over and over. Oh, and history just, repeats itself, of, my friend. You have friends. a little bit of guidance. You know, you, you know? have a little bit of guidance. So Dude, I, it's so crazy you said that because I was genuinely going to use a very, very similar similar uh, analogy. And I was going to say, like, how are you going to know if the stove's hot if you don't touch it? Yeah. Like, how are you going to know that you bruise if you don't fall? How are you going to know you get a scratch if you don't fall? You, you got to fall. And, like, I've been working on that as a man and as a parent to, like, allow them to 
make their own mistakes. Right. I'm not going to let you go loserville and, like, you know, ruin your entire life. But, like, you know, I feel like making your own mistakes, like you said, teaches you things that other people can't explain to you. Yep. Because you got to feel that hurt. And here's the thing I'm going to tell you right now. It's ten times harder for a real one. So all the real ones going to go through ten times harder worth of stuff. Like, if it, it, you going to go through the trenches. You're going to go through the fire. You're going to go through these things. It's not bad luck. People no. look at it as like, oh, my luck, you know, what was me? You know, like poopy pants. Like, I feel, you know, back to the poopy pants. We yeah. had to go full circle on them, baby. Um, but, yeah, I feel like people. I thought maybe that was the name I earned. I wasn't sure. <laughs> you kept saying it. I P-B. thought I had a new name. P-B. Uh-oh. Or P-P, rather. Yeah, yeah, poopy pants. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, man, like, I feel like definitely. All the cool kids, Peter Pants. <laughs> Straight up. Straight up. But, yeah, definitely got to go through your own struggles, trials, and tribulations to be develop as a human. I think that kind of brings me to something related, not exactly. But yeah. as a parent of older kids, you know, my kids are 26, 21, uh, 11, and 9, almost 10. Yeah. I had to make sure I didn't mess it up there. I'd be in trouble when they see this. Uh, but I think it's important that, that, that dad show that, you know, I'm not Superman. You know, there's always that, that vision of, of dad is – invulnerable but you gotta you gotta be a little bit vulnerable with them too like i think back to like older generations where you know dad goes to work and dad comes home and dad don't feel dad don't cry dad don't make mistakes you know everything is perfect and and i think it's important that my kids see i make mistakes whether as a parent as an adult as a, a husband as as a worker as a man yeah as a man as like a it's man, okay to make know? mistakes it's okay. I, otherwise you end up with this idea that like i can never live up to that that image of what my dad was. And it's yeah. like, dad was showing you something that wasn't really a hundred percent who he was. Like yeah. I show my kids who I am when I, when I'm struggling, I'm not going to let my kids know everything, but like my kids know I'm struggling and I can teach them from that. Yeah. I think it's important because we, <clears throat> we learn from our mistakes, but we also learn from other people's mistakes. Like I think it's important that like with my own parents, like I learned from things they did not do well, you yeah. know, and uh, I think it's important that, that my kids see that. You know, I, I, obviously I don't make many mistakes, but, you know, I'm pretty perfect, <laughs> you know. But, you know, I can teach my kids from the mistakes I do make and, and figure out ways to to turn everything into a, a learning situation. 100%. And I'm so glad that you brought this up because I, I tell people all the time, I didn't realize that my parents were real people until they were dead and I was already a grown man. Yeah. Like straight up like uh you know my mom died when I was 13. Uh my dad died when I was 19. So as I was entering my teenage years, my mom died. And as I was leaving my teenage years, my dad died. I probably wasn't maybe 22, 23 and finally like I, I to be honest, I think the way I realized it's so silly. I think I was watching a comedian talk about it and it was a bit that he had talking about how Something along the lines that parents are just regular people, yeah. you know, and like it was something along. The, I don't remember the bit, but like that triggered me in this. Like it put me. It was like a catalyst for me to realize that, you know, my parents were just regular people who had their own dreams. They had their own uh, failures. Uh, you know, their own, their own like mistakes. They had their own wishes. They had their own everything. They were regular people that I had built up in my head, and they had built up in my head to think like I was mad at my parents for dying. Yeah. Like how, you know, like... Because they're supposed to be invulnerable. You get what I mean? Yeah, like, 100%. I was angry, angry with my parents. Like, how could you leave me here? Yeah. Granted, I mean, I took it and turned it into diamonds, you know? Like, right. I mean, I made moves and, like, I came out on the other side alive wearing a fur coat. But, like, at the same time, it was just so tough, man. Like, it was really, like, that's why, you know, not a lot of people know truly how to survive in this world by themselves you know it's tough man and like i just want to make sure that my children i want to teach them everything that i wasn't taught first of all and i want them to know that i am a regular human being i have emotions i have uh you know dreams i have wishes i have things that i like to do as my own person because if i'm not okay mentally right i will never be good for them right I will never bring them the peace and happiness and protection that they need and the security and the support. Capone, lay down. Go. Go.
Yeah, so I had to, we had to get the dog out of here. He just kept messing up. Sorry for the, you know, little transitions that we're going to keep, you know, not keep doing, but have had to do. We've had some technical difficulties. First episode back after like two years, so it's to be expected. But it's all good because, you know, we're just going to keep on rolling. But uh, back to what I was saying, man, is like it just took me a real long time to realize that I cannot build up this image and put myself on a pedestal to my children because the day that I do die, it's going to devastate them even worse. And I don't want them to have, like, hate in their heart and, like, you know, I don't want them to feel any type of way about it. It's a part of life, and, like, I took it and just – it turned me into a very jaded, very cynical and, like, pessimistic and, like – I don't know, man. It just it, it it hardened my heart, dude. Like it really did. And I I don't regret anything. I don't. I I needed that to happen in order for me to you know grow as a human and to evolve as a human because I wouldn't have learned it if I didn't experience it. And that goes back to what we were saying is like, can a you know can a single mother raise a man? That's from exactly what I was just thinking. You know, because it's kind of like, like we were saying there, like the. The trials and tribulations of our life make us who we are. That mm-hmm. fire and that 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 hammer and that anvil yep. they make us steel. You know what I'm saying? Like 100%. it makes you stronger. It makes you tougher, more resilient. And I want my kids to see that. I don't want them to see that dad just had it easy because dad was Superman. You know, dad fell down and dad got up again and again and again. Therefore, I can fall down and yeah. get up again and again and again. I yeah. think it's important, but I feel like it's a new thing. You know what I mean? Like, it's not a way that parents really did things. It's not the way that I grew day. up. And, I mean, I'm, I'm a part of, like, you know, my generation of people who were in school wasn't that long ago. Like, we're yeah. coming up on 10 years, but, like, right. that's not that that's long not ago. Long. Like, no. there's not been that much of a dramatic change, but there has at the same time. Right, right. Excuse me. There's a, excuse me. There's definitely been dramatic changes, but like it's not very different. Technology has made things different, but like I can relate to my daughter because you know I was 16 when she was born. Right. So therefore, I'm not that I'm not that much older. Like you're not pull, you're not getting slick with me. Yeah. Like you ain't pulling one on old dad because I was just doing it. Right. Like genuinely was just doing it. So like. And, and, and thank God, I'm, I'm blessed because she's actually a sweetheart. She's like a kind Amazing. person. She's intelligent. She's well put together. You know, I was a degenerate. She's doing a good job raising you. You know what I mean? Like, she's raising me. She's the boss, bro. You feel me? But, like, you know, I was a degenerate crazy person for a long time. Like, you know, I was just off the chain, man. Like, I, literally, like I said, my mom died. And then, like, I was living with my dad. And my dad was just cool as a fan he was like look if you get good grades it don't get in trouble free reign dude live do whatever you want like i'm gonna do me you're gonna do you yep we're cool do what you do so i did and ended up having a child of 16 <laughs> like you know what i mean like i would never change it for the world and i'm right. glad it happened right. because it made me who i am but like you know free reign i was like oh okay i'll just do whatever i want literally and i did man i ran the streets i you know, did everything around here. And I think it also goes back to something else we were saying earlier, you know, with, with, with the whole single mother thing. Like, you know, you, you find those role models. You find those influences, too. And it's like, I mean, look at me and you. Yeah. I mean, I had you in class when you were 14. Literally 14 and, and, years old. And, you know, I mean, I, I tried to be, you know, a, a, you know, some type of no, – not, not necessarily trying to be a role model. Just trying to, to be a man and show you, you know, show you – a different a different way yeah you know and uh and then we end up being years, years later brothers. we end up being friends yeah brothers bro yeah. like we were friends at first like hung out a couple few times and like brothers bro yeah. like really came you know a long way man from just you having me in class yeah me yeah. having the jufro you feel me <laughs> i was out here looking rough you know what's really funny is uh it's back the, when i had hair <laughs> you did. Yeah, don't be talking you about did. hair because you get me on. I'm just. I look, look I'm upset. terrible. I saw a picture of myself the other day, uh, my freshman year, and I was like, "Oh God, what was I thinking?" I didn't hold like, against you because you was ugly, though. I mean, <laughs> you still, you still a nice kid. I was, you know, I, I was, I was nice, but it's crazy, man, because we clicked from the time we met. You know, we really vibed, and then like. Well, I mean, the thing is, it's like I grew up in rough situations so as a teacher what i've always tried to be is 
to, I'm, I mean, you know how I am. I'm very vulnerable. I tell my story to my kids. So my students, I mean my students when I say my kids sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my students <laughs> know in the same way as a parent that, that I am vulnerable, that I made mistakes. But guess what? I made mistakes as a kid, and I did stupid things and got in trouble and made bad grades. Yeah. But you can climb up out of it, and you can learn from those mistakes. So to me, it all all this we're talking about ties together. 100%. Because it's the same way I am as a father that, that from my mistakes – you can make a life, you yeah. know, you can make, make something great out of it because yeah. you don't have to make the mistakes. I done made them. All you got to do is learn from them. Yeah. And, and I think that's something I always try and show. And I think that's one of the reasons that, that you and I click because it was yeah. like, you, you, I got you, you got me kind of thing. You know, I, yeah, I know where, I know where, what your struggles in life. Cause I lived them. You know, I didn't read a book about them or take a class about them. Like mm-hmm. I lived them. That's the difference so, that people don't get, man. It's ten times harder for a real one. That's all I'm saying. It, it's Period. it's okay to be vulnerable. I, th- I think Period. that's important. You know, it really is, and like it's hard to do with your kids because you don't want them to see you like that. But at the same time, you kind of have to, man. Like you got to be attentive to allowing them in, because I like, think about all the people who go around their family and be fake. How yeah. many people go around their family and they're that's not them. That's not yeah. the real you. That's not who you really are. I don't want my kids to ever feel like that. I don't yeah. want anybody. I don't even have no family. I built my own family. Yep. Like, I don't have no family, man. Like, all my family's dead. Like, I don't have nobody. I got the family I built. And I don't ever want them to question themselves on whether they should be the real them or not around me. Right. I feel like I want you to be as unapologetically yourself as you possibly can be. Like, I don't want nothing And you, you else, want them to know they can come to you because yeah. you get it. You I get, get it, it and, and that you love them and, regardless, and even if they make mistakes. Because guess what? They know that dad made mistakes. Yeah. And therefore, I mean, yeah, sometimes they're going to hold it over you. I ain't going to lie. Oh, I, I've had teenagers at this point. They're, they're grown now. Yeah. But they're going to hold your mistakes. Well, well, when you were a kid, you blah, blah. Yeah, and I'm yeah. Like, well, yeah, I made mistakes, but guess what? I learned from them, so we're going to learn from them. And let me let me tell you how you're going to learn from them. You're going to go fix this thing you did, you know? Yeah, I'm probably going to have to save some of my stories from when my kids are grown, bro, because I can't be giving them no ideas to be a crazy person, you know? I want them to, like, you know, be good people. I said so. be vulnerable. You can still edit it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to give you them. You get the, the abridged version. Literally, bro, 100%. It's crazy, but yeah, man, I'm so excited for us to be back. Like, it feels so good. Like, awesome. man, it feels so good. Like I said, we had some technical difficulties, but it is what it is, man. You just keep rolling. We, That's we are we, we are building the plane while while we are flying. It. <laughs> yes, that is. We are literally on the fly, baby. But I got something else for you right now. Um, if you could pick any time in history to be a warrior. What time period would it be oh and why? Let's. This is going to be our wrap it up. I want, I want to finish on this you note. Break, as this a history is, teacher, you're about to break my brain right now. Period. This is beautiful right now. So what do you think, bro? God. Anywhere and any time? Anywhere, anytime. Something about – I've always, always been just a big fan of just – Guerrilla warfare tactics yeah. in in the jungle, not like you know, you know, guerrilla <laughs> as in like we we run and we move and we not yeah, yeah. stand in a line. I don't like that kind of war. Yeah, but like Aztec warrior, dude, apocalypto type deal, oh. bro. Shout out apocalypto. That's such That's a such a good movie. killer movie. Yeah, killer yeah. movie, man. But I mean, just I don't know that that primal, that feral, almost kind of. Feeling, you know, you you fighting for something that's more than just your country and your cause. You're fighting for everything that is who you are as a people. And the, and the thing is, is it's much that. more personable. Yeah, yeah, it's like I like I'm gonna kill you in your face. <laughs> like I'm gonna I'm gonna kill you in your face. Like I'm gonna you like you're gonna see me in your face. War's different now, man. War it's is not very the same. different. Like I it's, did a lot of research with like World War One, and that's where it all really changed. Like. You just think that's before the you biggest tell yours, one, like the gap that where really it changed, where bows and changed? arrows to guns type deal? I mean, not like bows and arrows to guns, but well, just the entire mentality. Like, if you think about this, like, before World War One, there literally were people in the beginnings of World War One who thought they were going, they were planning to go to the battles to go watch battles. The way they did in, like, the Civil War. People yeah, would take okay. picnic baskets to, to, to Civil War battles. Sit in the cut. To go sit in the cut and, and, and watch it. Yeah. But then, with World War One, the French... 
actually pulled up in the beginning of the war mm -hmm. with their big fancy hats on and their yeah. officers riding in the front and their big fancy white horses. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the Germans just popped out of their holes with Gatling guns and mowed them all down. <laughs> and, and then, you know, you start with Machine nerve gas and stuff. And it's like it changed everything. Changed the game. The war Truly was did. a whole different beast at that point. Yeah, so, it really did. so what about you? Um, honestly, hold on one second. Let me hit this. Okay, so for me personally, I'd probably say Viking, so like pagan era. Like that's also like kind of what you're saying, like yeah, in the Aztec yeah. warrior. Uh, not the same time period, right, obviously, right. but a very similar uh, type, type of, of, fighting, of yeah. warrior, yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, I, I would say Viking or – I think would... I take good hair too. You oh, know? bro, their hair was magnificent. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, they had the natural dreads, bro, like braids and like just luscious locks, man. It was awesome. I'd say uh, probably Viking era. Or like or... a naked Celt. Yeah. For real, let's go, baby. You know, let's go. I'm, you know, the Scots, you know, like Braveheart era, yeah. that was sick. Um, you know, they got destroyed, but, you know, what can you do? England, you know. England. Sure. <laughs> Freedom. But, yeah, for real. Uh, I don't know, man. Another one that I'd probably say would be, like, during the Crusades. Okay, okay. Because that is very, a very brutal time in history, but also a time of history that is so well known Probably more well known than any other time. Right. right. I mean, well, would you agree? Yeah. Like oh, yeah. more people know you're about talking the Crusades. Like, oh, yeah, I mean, it, 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 we tend to reference it quite a bit. Yeah. 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 Like I feel like it's a day to day. Everybody kind of knows what it is. You know, like I feel like the Crusades and like I don't even know about that. I teach freshmen. They well, know, fair enough. Stuff, fair. I feel like grown people. Okay. Grown okay. people. Okay. You know, grown people. I feel right. like uh, are not, aware. They're not people yet. Fair enough. Yeah, they're still forming, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> your penile gland isn't completely formed yeah. until you're yep. 25 years old. So, especially with men. Like, men are still in puberty until they're, like, 25, yeah. 26. So, you know, I uh, I definitely – I think that would be an awesome time, not only to be a warrior in, but to be alive in. Okay. You know, like, I feel like it's a really, really cool – time to be alive just to see how the world was because here's the thing i'd be happy in those times as long as i can bring bring like go back in time and i want to bring, bring my deodorant deodorant and my <laughs> central air conditioning you know <laughs> because you better believe everybody was stanking out here oh. boy that is a terrible no time ac for and no do for the brutal BO. <laughs> brutal and, and uh but what i was gonna say is like um i think now right now in time we will look back, not us, but people will look back and say this is, this was the rise of technology, and this is the most technological that, hu like, uh, you know, that uh, human existence has ever been. Yeah. But I think that while gaining this technology and gaining this intelligence, I feel like we have lost our spirituality. Absolutely, we've, I feel we've like lost we a lot of things from it. I think that Absolutely. is one of the biggest ones. I think ancient civil ancient civilizations were more in tune with their brains, with their consciousness, like their bodies, their souls. Right. Like I feel like they were in tune, and we will never know, and we will never yeah. ascend in that like in that regard. We don't have to. We got technology. Yeah, <laughs> we got like we got smartphones, but people got you know dumber. Yeah, you know, like it's crazy, like. Instead I mean, of if you think about something just as simple as I thought about this the other day, I go to the bathroom and take my phone with me. The yeah. other day I thought, man, what did I do before this? And then I realized Magazines. I used to read books. Books. I used to read books. Hey, the, I mean, I still right do now, read books, just not in the bathroom. I'm going to tell you right now, I like to take a good dump and read a, and read a book. Yeah. I love it, bro. Yeah. It's good for the soul, I feel like. Absolutely. You drop a deuce. You read a book. Or how about this? You get how about the, the idea of sometimes just sit in silence and let your brain rest for a minute? I can't. Right? Yeah. It's like on that episode of Regular Show, Pops was like, he's like, what's this? Like somebody, I think Rigby was like, what's the scariest thing we could do right now? He's like, why don't we just sit alone and be with our thoughts? So I was like, oh, That's... God. Oh, God. I <laughs> never want to do that. I have that demons that are just de destroying yeah. my yeah. mental health. I need to be busy doing something. I need to clean. I need to do push-ups. I need to do something. Better myself. Like I, being alone with your thoughts is a terrifying thing. It sure can be. It can be terrifying. Yeah. But, man, this has been so much fun. A lot of fun. I'm so sorry for the technical difficulties. 
Uh, thank you all for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. Anybody who wants to get on the show that is interesting, that you might think would be an awesome guest, please tag them. Let them know. Tell them to hit me up directly. Looking for business owners who want to promote their business and come on and talk about uh, what they're doing with their business and so on and so forth. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you tuning in to Together FTR. Peace.